Welcome back to West Virginia Resource. Today we're detailing our top eight neighborhoods in Charlestown for those of you looking for some direction in your home search. Be sure to stick around for that bonus neighborhood. Trying to explore a new area virtually can be very daunting, but we're going to break it down for you and give you a place to start with your research, whether you're searching online or ready to plan a visit soon. When it comes to choosing a home, there are a lot of factors to consider. We're looking at popular subdivisions today, but perhaps you prefer a home that isn't in an HOA or as close to the neighbors. Or maybe you don't mind a subdivision if there's some green or open spaces nearby. There are options for everyone in Charlestown. Keep watching for our breakdown of some of the places where homes are most often for sale in this popular Jefferson County city. And don't forget to comment below with your thoughts or if there's a favorite neighborhood in Charlestown that we missed. Let's jump into our first neighborhood today, in no particular order. Of the nearly 500 sales in Charlestown over the last year, nearly 20% were in the neighborhood of Norborn Glebe. Six of those were resale homes in the older part of the neighborhood, while 91 were newer townhomes and single family homes built by Lennar. They've been busy at Lennar. They've been very busy at Lennar. <laughs> you can buy a new townhome here in the low 300,000 range or build a new single family home for under 500,000. If you're a first time buyer, you may qualify for lower than average interest rates and possible grants through the West Virginia First Time Buyers Program. Reach out to us for the lender contacts who know about these programs and qualify. The older section of Norborn Glebe has a mix of rancher style and colonial homes built in the early 2000s up to around 2012. The homes have generous yards and are located close to both 340 and Route 9 for easy access to major commuting routes. Exciting news, this community will soon have a pool for residents. This is a rare find in Charlestown and Jefferson County in general, so you can look forward to easy access to a local swimming spot. Next up, we have Aspen Greens. This location is close to downtown Charlestown, but tucked back on Flowing Springs Road, giving you more of a rural vibe. This fairly new construction community made up of single family homes built by DRB is now sold out, so you'll need to keep an eye on resales if you want to get into this community. Time will tell how the pricing of resales in this neighborhood shakes out, but from the very limited amount of resales from the past year, we can say they were going for over 550,000. You will enjoy large lots here with a third of an acre up to almost half an acre. And the earth tones they chose for the home colors are very serene. That's true, I do really like the green a lot. Yeah. Enjoying our Charlestown neighborhood breakdown? We would love to have you as one of our subscribers. Hit that subscribe button to be part of our community and then comment below with any questions you have or insights to share about your West Virginia home search. Our next neighborhood is just east of Aspen Greens called Beale Air. Written out, it really looks like Bel Air, so don't get mixed up on that. True. We kept getting mixed up ourselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perks here include the HOA taking care of lawn maintenance for the front and backyards and a community clubhouse. You'll find a mix of townhomes and single family homes in this neighborhood. Here, homes were built between 2005 all the way up to brand new homes currently being built by Wormald Homes. Prices for the detached homes selling over the past year ranged from the high 400,000s to almost $800,000. There aren't many townhome sales, just one in the last year that sold for 550,000. In general, it seems that one or less townhomes come on the market each year here. So if you see one you like, you need to jump on it. Moving on, let's head to Huntfield, which is tucked in next to Washington High School. You'll get a mix of nearly everything here. New construction and resales, townhomes and single family homes. Yeah, and interestingly, out of the 55 homes sold here in the last year, 31 were actually new construction. If you're looking for single family homes, they range from just under 350 to nearly $575,000. And for townhomes, you're looking at nearly 250 to nearly 350,000. If you're into outdoor activities, this place has you covered. There are basketball courts, jogging and walking paths, tennis courts, and a playground. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. The top neighborhoods from here on out are tougher to get into with fewer homes coming up on the market. Our first example is Locust Hill with 21 sales last year. Locust Hill also features a mix of single family and townhomes. I'm seeing a theme here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> These homes were built in the late 90s to early 2000s. Single family homes typically sell in the upper 400,000s, while townhomes can range from over 250,000 to just over $400,000. Golfers take note, this neighborhood is located right next to the Locust Hill Golf Course with some homes backing to greens. Next up, located right next door to Locust Hill sits Tuscawilla Hills. We have another mix of single family homes and townhomes. However, you get a wide range of age on these with some being built as far back as 1969 and others all the way up to 2021. Last year, there were just 19 sales in this neighborhood. Single family homes prices range from the high 100,000s up to over 400,000. Townhomes sell for just over 200,000 to over 300,000. 
This neighborhood really offers some great price points for first time home buyers. It's also worth noting that this is one of the rare communities in Jefferson County with an age requirement in certain locations. Mm, those exist? Well, a few <laughs> years ago, a couple homes here sold indicating that the age minimum requirement was 45 plus years old, not mm -hmm. the 55 that we're used to hearing. Yep, something to watch out but for. A small handful. <laughs> there have been a lot of new communities added to Charleston in the last few years. Another popular one of note is Milton's Landing. This neighborhood is notable for offering lots that are an acre or larger. The development started at the end of 2022 with 19 homes sold there over the last year, ranging in price from 383,000 to nearly 623,000. There don't seem to be any amenities in the neighborhood at this time. The neighborhood is located just west of downtown Charlestown and Route 340 and close to Tuscaloosa Hills and Locust Hill. The next neighborhood is located close to Route 340, but generally south of Charlestown. In Spruce Hill, the homes were mostly built in the early 2000s and the prices in the last year have ranged between 540,000 up to about 675,000. One section has lots of an acre or more, while the other section has smaller lots of about a quarter acre. The streets seem to have tree-related names here. As with many neighborhoods in the area, there don't seem to be any amenities associated with the neighborhood, so you'll need to drive for your summer pool time. All right, our bonus, if you've stuck around, are the non-HOA properties and communities, many of which exist in Charlestown. There are homes both within the city limits and outside of the city limits of Charlestown that are not in an HOA, some don't even have a legal subdivision name. Over 90 homes that fit into this category sold in the last year, including homes built in 1847 all the way up to 2023. So if you're someone who prefers to live outside of an HOA, you have options. All right, now that you know more about popular neighborhoods in Charlestown, head over to our Charlestown, West Virginia playlist to learn more about this popular destination. Specifically, our Discover Charlestown video will give you a behind the scenes tour you won't find anywhere else. If you're preparing for a visit to Charlestown, email us or fill out the link in the comments and we will send you our driving neighborhood guide or the Charlestown visitors guide. Thanks for tuning in today and keep those West Virginia questions and comments coming. See you next time.